Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the Tarot portion of the second half of my daily astrology vlog, which you can check out on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. Over there, you'll find a description of the day's astrology as I've spelled it out here. Here, I'll discuss the Tarot card that sits on the side of the page, and then I will play another card that, in the context of the day's astrology, may just give us something more to think about. So let's get into it. The card that currently sits on the side of the page is the Seven of Swords, and it is here because it corresponds in astrology with the last 10 days or the third decan of the sun's transit here in the land of Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. Swords in Tarot represent air element symbolism. And air element symbolism is very much about the thoughts, plans, and communications that we make individually. Okay, so, uh, you know, your own rationale, your own logic, the way you go about strategizing, <laughs> dealing with conflict, uh, you know, getting through your day. And so thoughts, plans, and communication is the name of the game here. And we come to the seven of swords. And if we think of those swords there as our, as somebody's thoughts, plans, and communications, we see somebody doing some sort of shady stuff here. Looks like they're trying to make off with somebody else's a good idea or use the, their words or, uh, you know, um, maybe they, they think they see somebody has a good plan and they, they think they can do something better with it. Right. Or they can think they can do something for themselves with it. In any case, there is deception at work here. There is trickery. There is sort of the turning of a blind eye. Um, it, it's interesting to me. I always, I always, uh, I always, thought of this as this person was looking over their shoulder, but they really appear to have their eyes closed. Like, oh, I don't see what I'm doing and I hope nobody else sees what I'm doing either. Just making off with more swords than I can handle um, on my own. And, and clearly, you know, there's people in the distance who don't realize they're doing that. So uh, sometimes we feel a little bit of pressure. Look, every, everybody engages in dishonesty from time to time. Sometimes we feel a little pressure to be dishonest um, in order to get what we uh, need or desire from a situation. So, you know, that would be, uh, I, I, let me, let me say it, you know, all week this, this card has been giving me big George Santos vibes, <laughs> right? Just sort of making yourself out to be someone or something that you are not saying that you do things that you don't actually do saying that you've been places that you don't act, haven't actually play been using somebody else's playbook to get ahead, which is exactly the, which is very George Santos. He's just obviously using that other politicians who's, whose name I don't like to mention, uh, is obviously just using that person's playbook and said, look, he lied his butt off. I'm going to lie my butt off. And, and look, I got into office and I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> You're going to have to uh, elect somebody else in the future. If you want to get rid of me, it's really his idea. But, um, you know, this really does speak to sort of making yourself out to be something that you're not or to sort of using somebody else's playbook or using somebody else's plan or idea uh, to try to get ahead yourself. And, um, you know, the problem with with that is that somebody is always going to notice that you weren't being honest and and then, you know, you get called out for it. And if you're like George Santos, you're just constantly being called out for it. And so you're constantly in this defensive position. You're constantly sort of looking over your shoulder, wondering like when that other shoe is going to drop, when this person is going to tell on me or, you know, when it's going to come out that I did this and such or I uh, or I, I did not do this and such. Right. So, um, yeah, that's the problem with, with, uh, being in a tricky, uh, state of mind of trying to deceive people. And then the other thing that always comes up for me with this card is, uh, is a reminder for all of us who have, uh, who have, you know, intellectual property that we created. If you're an artist of some kind, if you've created intellectual property, make sure that your intellectual property is well protected. Okay. Don't let somebody else again, make off with your good ideas. And with that said, I'm going to turn this card over. Oh, we got the five of swords. Hmm. 
So this deck is the Arthurian Tarot deck. I've introduced you to it before. It's about it, it's about King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, and all these pictures are from a pit from, are from a, a scene basically in that story. Which it's not just one story; it's a series of stories. There's a whole lot of them. Okay, but really, what the sort of what the Five of Sword uh, Five of Swords points to, and I don't know what this specific story is pointing to, but what the Five of Swords is about it is about you know sort of this um, desire that people have sometimes to win at all costs, right? Uh, going so far as to burn crops and, <laughs> and houses, making a place completely unlivable for anybody, right? That that's the kind of um, that's the kind of vibe that goes into being a five of swords, uh, you know, state of mind where you've got to win. You have to uh, you have to be able to come out the victor in any fight, even though that might mean being willing to um, destroy everything that has any kind of value for the people that you perceive as your competition so that they, they just can't compete. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, when you burn somebody's crop and you burn their house down, you send a very clear message that you don't appreciate their contribution. You don't appreciate what they, uh, sort of bring to your community. So, uh, you know, if those people survived, they're gone now. Right. Um, and, the problem with that is, of course, and there's always a problem when they're come when it comes to swords, <laughs> okay? Uh, because they can be used for engaging in conflict. You know that sort of truth can be used to help or to do harm, and sometimes, um, you know, it's it's even used in dishonest ways. So uh, this is this isn't necessarily a dishonest way of, of using your sort of truth. It's just a, if it, if it is dishonest, it's, it's that you've been dishonest with yourself. If you're the person who burned down these crops in this house and got rid of these people, then you, uh, you know, really have, um, suffered yourself a loss there, uh, in terms of people who were probably going to share their food with you, <laughs> people who probably, uh, could have done something to help you, could have offered you some sort of hospitality or, or, you know, had something of value to give and now they have nothing of value to get, give and you have completely destroyed um, any contribution that they might have made and so uh, you don't have anybody to work with there you know you're 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 losing you're not making friends for sure <laughs> and you're losing potential collaborators that's the that's the bottom line of sword sort of five of swords is when we win at all costs when we really feel like we have to win no matter what then we get ourselves in a position where we're ha we have to do everything on our own now you know who's gonna take care of that field who's gonna till that soil who's going to uh take care of this mess that you made uh you know so being right isn't everything winning <laughs> winning isn't winning at all costs isn't everything in fact it's really a, a good way to burn yourself in the butt if you uh if you feel like you have to win an argument at all costs if you feel like you have to win a, you know win a competition at all costs if you m maybe treat all conversations as though they were some kind of com a competition then you're already sort of um putting yourself in a in a in a place where you're going to struggle because when we treat everything like it's competition then certainly then nothing can survive around us except ourselves and then you put yourself in a situation where you have to be the expert on everything you have to do everything for yourself because you have uh, negated all of your options for collaboration okay so where do we see that on the page today the five of swords that's a that's a pretty bleak looking five of swords there isn't it yikes okay so uh the let's see the five of swords on the page swords take me directly to mercury because mercury is about the rationale and the logic we use our thoughts plans and communications and the sort of day-to-day -day running around decision-making that we do. So Mercury has just crossed over into Aquarius in the last few days. It it was conjunct to Pluto. So, you know, we had this real uh, clarity for a moment. And we might still be engaging in that a little bit. Um, because they're still essentially conjunct. They're still within 10, 10 degrees of one another. So they're impacting one another. And offering us this this real vibe of being able to see deeply not necessarily just within ourselves you know it's it's a good time to get some insight but it's also a good time just to be able to 
look at any circumstance or situation that that you know requires their attention and to see really to the core of things what's what is happening there and often when we can see to the core of things what is happening you know in a really simple in a simple way that is not complicated by um you know external things happening around it things that people said or you know what things look like or anything like that when you see to the core of a situation sometimes that makes it easier also if there's a problem there to solve the problem or if there's a change that needs to happen to just make the change right like okay some you know this this is the problem i see it for what it is and it's a simple simple on and off switch you know i either do it this way or i do it this way doing it this way isn't working so i'm going to do it this way and it'll probably work better right so hopefully you guys have been taking advantage of that of that vibe lately Mercury um, is no longer in Capricorn, so it's not so much focused on just the work that we have to do to, to get security for ourselves. It's moved on into Aquarius, which is ruled by Saturn and Uranus, but Saturn is he sitting here in Aquarius, so that Saturn-Aquarius vibe of wanting to, um, wanting to build, wanting to, uh, to um, either renew or replace systems, structures, institutions, networks that, uh, that don't work for us anymore, you know, whether they ever did, <laughs> there are a lot of systems and structures that don't work for us anymore. And, and the Saturn and Aquarius vibe, especially with the sign conjunct to Saturn is like our, our full outer life attention is on like, Hey, this isn't working. We've got to find a better way to do it. We've got to make some assessment. We've really got to give some thought and some planning to, how we're going to uh, move forward on this, um, you know, in the future. And one thing I see happening in culture a lot lately is that we're really assessing policing, right? So, um, you know, we have all of these, we have all this stuff coming up with policing and, um, you know, we are, we are in a mode of reassessment about it. I think that, I think that we're going to start to come up I think we're already starting to come up with some alternatives for like trying to renew it or refresh it or review how it's done. And I'm saying to you, because Pluto is going to move into Aquarius pretty soon here too, that if we can't find a way to, to uh, rehabilitate policing, we're probably going to find a way to re really get rid of it. And uh, I'm not saying that that's my wish. I'm just saying that that's what I see here. Uh, but that's the Saturn and Aquarius vibe is like we're really taking an assessment of things that don't seem to be working um, and, and asking ourselves what we can do to make it better. And not just for ourselves as individuals, but to uh, to create a security, a, a sense of security and safety and support in the community, in the in the human collective. So, uh, you know, that's that's um, <laughs> that's the sort of. I guess that's where that that's where the sort of the sword the the five of swords comes in where sword five comes in here is that uh you know I'm I'm seeing that there are um, old institutional ways of being here and and I'm using policing as the example where you know there's sort of a win at all costs sort of uh a mentality sort of the you know they always get their guy kind of mentality but uh you know the the destruction that that has uh, reaped for us the the destruction that has that that has meant um, over the really decades and centuries now has really uh, left us in a place where we you know we're in such division from these institutions and structures like pe you know people versus the institution whereas the institution is meant to be there to serve the people right um, we we really uh, we're really gonna have to reassess you know institutions that have to win at all costs <laughs> right uh the institution if it's not if it's there to serve people and it's not actually serving people then it's it's really not going to work for us in the future um that's that's the simple truth okay if it's you know if it's the if it's the institution's way or the highway then the institution is going to hit the highway eventually and so if i put that that was all very political, but you know, it's just, a, it's, it's an example of how, um, like the establishment, the institutions that we have that, that Pluto has been running through Capricorn here, breaking down old institutions and networks and ways of being that, ne that no longer work for us. 
Um, and Pluto's going to finish that up. And we've already got these three planets sitting here in, in Aquarius, including Aquarius's ruler, Saturn, just saying this is really going to be our major focus is reviewing and renewing and reassessing what those institutions should be looking like so that we can make a plan going forward that is supportive of everybody. So where, what do we see when we put the seven of swords together with the five of swords? And hopefully without a glare there. So, uh, you know, it goes five, six, seven. So it's almost like um, taking a couple of steps back, <laughs> right? Uh, these are both kind of win at any cost cards, though, right? The, so the Five of Swords usually depicts like one person who who appears to have just won a battle, and a couple of other people looking dejected and and humiliated, right? So uh, there's that sort of like I have to win the fight or the argument or the or the plan or the right to to rule, the right to lead at or, at any or all costs, even if it means um, you know burning down the houses and the farms of my neighbors, right? Which is which is really detrimental to me if I burn down the houses and the farms of my neighbors. But um, you know, some people just need that much to be right about something. And in this case, you know, this is a sort of being right at any cost, as in, um, oh, I see that person has a good way of doing things, and I, you know, I want to do them. I want to do them, so I'm going to make off with these these plans, and I'm going to use them for myself. And and uh, you know, it's uh, you know. Yeah. The swords, man. <laughs> the swords, they bring a lot of conflict. <laughs> okay. So uh, we really have to, we really have to step back from this idea that we have to be right at any, any cost. And we really have to step back also from this idea that we can just sort of usurp somebody else's plans and ideas and make them our own. Okay. We have to come up with our, with our own, um, answers to these problems we, we're not going to be able to just use somebody else's answers and i know that that's a really popular way of talking about you know we're renewing refreshing or or changing systems like oh we'll just do it the way this these people over here do it or we'll just do it the way these people over here do it and i think that you know um on a certain level it just it just makes common sense to try things that other people have tried but we also live in different localities and things are going to work differently for us so we're going to have to um, figure out I think on a local level what's going to work without having to sort of steal anybody's ideas or um, make anybody feel like they have been uh, incapacitated you know um, it, it's not about even one side or the other ruling at any cost um, it's just really about, you know, getting honest with ourselves and others about what's really happening on the institutional level, on the level of structure and network, uh, so that we can, um, you know, if we're honest with ourselves, then we can make an, a good assessment and we can uh, collaborate moving forward rather than trying to take care of everything ourselves or trying to just... Um, patchwork plans into place you know say that we are something that we are not so that we can uh so that we can pretend that we've solved the problem when we haven't Whew. okay i don't know if that was clear at all but um i hope that you got something out of it i think that's all i have to say about it today Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate your presence here. My name is Mel Rose, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more Astrology Today and Tarot.